When, when stuff happens to me, to me, to anyone, I think when you're a young kid at 11 when this started with me, it kind of fucks up with your brain. You know, my, my thought process wasn't always good, and I clearly had boundary issues. You know, I could have just said they hurt him, and it would have been enough. But I didn't. And I was also petrified because there were 10, and it happened to me at 11. So I wanted to scare the shit out of them. So I thought it was all over. It's pretty good. And they know. And then Aaron looked at me and said, Dad, did, did this happen to you? I don't know. That was my response. I don't know. But they knew. They knew as soon as I said that, because either you know this or you don't. And they knew it hadn't happened to them. So at that age, my kids knew my story. Nineteen seventy-one, at eleven, I found myself reaching, stretching, like an el like an elderly woman for a memory, a thing that I would learn to bury alive. Unlike Jesus and the resurrection, these would claw their way out of my soul's dirt and bring unholy salvation by making me go through it, like Thomas's finger through Christ's wounds. My right hand extended, fingertips just out of reach of the door. My left hand trying to pull his left arm from around my waist. His right hand over my mouth, whispering with liquor on his breath, with tobacco on his breath. God doesn't want to see you cry. God doesn't want to see you cry. And the cholera war made it true. And my soul descended, no, ascen no ascension with this dissociation. I began to walk my path into hell. Looking up, wondering why, if God doesn't want to see me cry, why is Mary shedding tears? Like a character in distress with no superheroes hearing my call, Bruce Wayne was tied up in a campy cliffhanger, and Superman had killed himself. Not that this was a place for him anyway. This cave was home to Batman, and he was missing. And I would draw him as if it were a map to show him the way. Bent at the waist as I strained for the door, I was in perfect position for him. Mm. Spoke of love. He wet his middle and index finger in his mouth and inserted it for lubrication. And repeated, and repeated, and entered. At the age of 13, 1973, I reached his car door handle, cutting CCD and waiting for him on the fire escape. He handed me my first beer. Like water to wine, this holy water was a miracle for survival, as I didn't have to work nearly as hard to numb my senses. Like the old Milltown machinist on endless Thursday nights, my reality became a blinding routine, keeping my sins and confessions secret, guilt caged by a bottle. And I stopped on my path, seeing Mary's eyes dry and Bruce Wayne's body hung. Batman replaced with Budman, Budweiser's marketing tool for children, which I never was. My Batman pictures were replaced with Alice Cooper eyes, loving the dead, the same as me. I expected beer cans as my father's way, but these were long neck bar balls for me to practice on. Some tricks he would teach me. One hand on the wheel, the other on a stick. I began my training. One bottle, on two bottles, and on him. At the age of 15, 1975, I opened my bedroom door. Having cut late evening play rehearsals where I would watch others pretend to be who they weren't, as I had come to live, to do my own stations of the I was post pot paranoid and buzz buzz, and I was paralyzed to the world, but turning a corner. Turning a corner towards the promised land, giving up on heroes and Mary now faceless, as would become all of the figures in my art for a while. I hit my head to the pillow, knowing my dirty deeds were done. I turned to music to shine the light. With the headphones plugged in, the gospel would begin, as only rock and roll could deliver my soul, because I too knew that, baby, this town rips the bones from your back, it's a death trap. It's a suicide rap. We gotta get out while we're young. Cause tramps like us, baby, we were born to run. Oh, no, I gotta feel like <laughs> not him. No, I did. I, I listened to music. Music was, was un, an unbelievable coping mechanism, and I did. I, I listened to stuff like Alice Cooper. <laughs> Muscle 
club. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I listen to Alice, I, I listen to like David Bowie. I guess, uh, <laughs> I listen to Lou Reed. <laughs> yeah, just forget. You know, I, the, the, those songs are very sexually dangerous and very cool when you're 13 and normal. Uh, I was 13 with a fucked up head. Um, so I thought by liking that people knew something about me. You know, like I'd be at the record store, you know, pick up a Queen album, and there'd be some guy over here in the folk section. Did you get over there buying the Queen record? You drugs off, priest. <laughs> I had no idea. I was paranoid, so I would go over to the folk section. You know. Paul Simon, James Taylor, James Taylor. Yeah. You've got a friend. Yes, I'm standing way too fucking close because I have space issues, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Still didn't work for him. Uh, and then that, that night I heard Bruce. You know, baby, this town rips the bones from your back. It's a death trap. It's a suicide rap. Holy shit, this guy was speaking to me. And I learned something. I learned you could actually communicate through art. I said, this is great. You know, and I just stored that in my fucked up head. Because someday I thought, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to communicate through art. And then I did. In the mid-90s, I did this series called Catholic Guilt. And, and I, I was all excited about it because I was now going to be Bruce. I was going to communicate through my art. This was one of the centerpieces of it, you know, Catholic Guilt. And, Got this red stripe down the side, which is stop and danger, and, and the figure in the middle is, is done with charcoal, so it's, it's black and white, but mostly gray, because everything's gray, and this crazy, confused head of mine, you know, and I was twisted and tortured in pain, and I don't know if the red was to warn people, don't come in to get to know me, or me, don't go out and, and expose yourself to people, and, but here I was, Catholic guilt, I had the show in Providence, one-man show, granted it was a restaurant, but it was still a one-man show, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I invited all these people down, you know, I was all excited, and people came to support me, and I, my father came, you know, I said, you know, what do you think? So it looks like a man singing in the shower. <laughs> you know, putting it out there, and you know it does. It looks like a man singing in the shower. <laughs> I have no idea, you know. And so I was a little bit more confused than angry, you know. I was, I, 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 I was trying to say something, trying to communicate something that maybe I really didn't want to communicate. And the, the people who bought the artwork, a lot of that was sold. People that, that came and supported me, and the uh, outside art community, the you know, people that you just mostly party with, nobody asked the same question that Aaron asked me. And I was furious. I don't even know if I wanted to answer it, but at least I had a place to place my anger. <coughs> I believe the essence of his work, the complete body of his work, clearly stands for, in my opinion, the essence of himself. And as the bullshit begins, the madness sets in upon any angelic artist who serves to serve insanity's demon, fed by the constant mantra of lies, contradictions, and inconsistencies from people who try to substitute glorious lives for their own, which are pathetic, pitiful, really, to try to belong to the next trend before it becomes one, hip and on the edge, middle class, middle aged, weekend freaks posing like their children, who pose like them, living through all this blood. Culture junkies booting the cool, hoping that by sharing the needle, the fix is in, that they are in, the soulless flesh, goatee, designer coffee sippers who still have to fucking shave, have pseudo-intellectual banter with those who completely agree with cliché reasoning, advancing the sole purpose of a bullet, which is controlled by a gun, which is controlled by any asshole that benefits no revolution. Bang! Destruction and deconstruction rewards are a fraud. No prize, nothing to rebuild. It's too late. Just a vast wasteland to be part of, to belong to, the unholy, where pain is good, where pain is God, belongs to someone else, to be discussed with heavy petting and panting and drooling, as if it were owned or at least controlled. Away from the bullshit, it's downwards, moving towards the underground, just shy of its entrance. Where you're only as good as your drug, you mingle with the trendy, the upscale pimps, the whores, the thieves, and priests offering absolution, while previewing the next confession. The uptown cool brats, ungodly and dirty, with perfectly 